come to that point in our life where we have to make a decision. It can't be me making that decision for you. In my Bible study with other pastors in other states, we just finished this book that we love. But we learned about Josiah. And one of the things and how great Josiah was, he led people back to the Lord. He tore down the Asherah poles and the high places, and he, he got the country back on track for God. But see, he made a fatal mistake. He led reform, not revival. Come on, preach it, Pastor Jesus. See, revival starts when we personally take that choice and say, it's all yours, Lord. Absolutely. Not just Sunday mornings. I want to give you Tuesday afternoon. <clears throat> Not just Sunday mornings. I, Lord, I want to give you that Thursday at, at 3 o'clock when I don't really, I just want to call out on Friday. <laughs> Lord's put this message upon me, and I've been stirring on it for a couple of months. And I want to ask you a question Have you ever judged a book by its cover? Somebody do something in your life where you see that that's their first initial reaction, their first impression, and you've just, you just signed them off. You ever judge somebody based on one interaction, one mistake? Absolutely. Have you ever been judged by one interaction or one mistake? I want to take a look today at Thomas. Thomas was one that, was, that we judged day in and day out. Anybody ever call him Doubting Thomas? You might call him something different after today. You might say a little bit something different about Mr. Thomas. <laughs> Thomas had the perfect teacher. He was part of the perfect church because it had the perfect teacher. But I want to take a look at Thomas a little bit more as I've dived deep into Thomas. And I tell you, there's there's so much that to unpack. We're gonna hopefully we're, we're gonna get through it in one day. But I want you guys to contemplate what Thomas did. Put yourself in Thomas's shoes, and I'm, you might even find that it's not that hard to do. There's a little bit of Thomas, or a lot of Thomas, in all of us. Let us stand for the reading of His Word as we look at John chapter 20, verses 24 through 29. Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were, put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Church say, I will not. Oh. Doesn't sound like doubt to me. After a week later, his disciples... So we're in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Amen. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Church, say and. And those little words. My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, because you have seen me and you have believed, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Father, may your word ring true today. No filter. <clears throat> may we hear Lord, it is my personal prayer that every single one of us makes a decision today. Whether it's a decision we've made before, whether it's a renewal of a decision, or whether it's a decision we're making for the very first time, may we draw the line of the sand and say, this is my decision. Not because Daryl's asked, but because your word has requested it's in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. I want to talk a little bit about Thomas. His name is Aramaic for twin. Didymus also is the Greek side name for twin. 
He may have been a fisherman because earlier he was caught out fishing with the other 12 or some of the other 12 after Jesus' resurrection. We're not told biblically what happened to Don Thomas before he died. Church tradition and other historical references say that he spread the word in India, in common day India, and he was martyred for his faith there. What we do know about Thomas is we've always called him Doubting Thomas. A lot of people call him Doubting Thomas. And as I was starting to research his response, I don't know about that. Doubt leaves a little bit of hope for belief. I doubt that it's Sunday. I still have a little bit of belief that it might be Sunday. I doubt that God's going to increase the number because of what I'm only seeing but I still have hope that he can do so. Doubting Thomas. And I wonder if someone has made that decision to judge you based on one action that you've done. That's totally Greek to some of the folks that might have spent some time in our correctional facility, right? Nobody's ever judged you based on one thing, right? This might just apply. See, Thomas knew the Lord. Some may call him a skeptic. But see, Thomas knew Jesus well. It's not just he heard about Jesus and said, I'll give my life to him. He followed the man for three and a half years. He was homeless with him. He, he watched him perform these miracles. He was part of the, part of the crowd that was sent out to, to cast out demons and perform miracles in his name. There was no doubting of who Thomas was and what Thomas believed when he did all these things. Thomas was bold in his faith. John 11, 8, and 16 recounts it. This, Thomas was the only apostle who wanted to go to Judea with Jesus, where the others looked to persuade him. This is when Jesus' good friend had passed away, and the fastest route was through, through Judea. And then they said, no. He said, well, through Samaria, actually. And, and, and the disciples said, no, we, we, we need to go through the common route that us Jews like to take. He said, no, I must go through this way. And Thomas said, if that's the way he's going to go, I'm going to go. I'll die with him. Everybody else took the sideline and said, I don't know if that's the best route to take, Lord. May not be the safest look. One source actually said boldly that Thomas was not a doubter because doubt leaves hope to believe. Thomas fully rejected the resurrection. I'm not going to believe it unless he, unless he stands in front of me. And I can see the, the holes in his hands and put my hand in. I'm not going to believe it. I refuse to believe. And I know folks in my own circle of influence that, that they, those exact words have come out. There's no doubt there. There's a refusal to believe. Doubt. Well, at best, if he didn't, if he didn't just doubt, or if he if he was a full unbeliever because of this event. At the, very, at the very minimal side of things, he was a conditional believer. Oh, I'll only believe God and follow Jesus if he does A, B, and C for me. Anybody else done that? My whole family should raise their hand. We've done that. I'll believe, in Je I'll, I'll believe this is what Jesus wants me if he can do this, this, and this for me. A conditional faith. You ever have conditional faith yourself? I don't believe if God does this. A lot of times that if is a condition to get us out of the mess that we've made and with our own decisions. Well, that one hurts. If God will help me out of this situation that I did on my own, then I'll, then I'll serve God wholeheartedly. Conditional. Do you have conditional faith? See, Thomas missed out. This is where most people go to when they preach this passage of, of, of Scripture. Thomas missed out on a lot of things. He missed communion with his brethren. Now, communion is one of those things that we do and that we will participate in today, where we take the bread and the wine and, and we do it in remembrance of Christ. But communion, the word, actually means to get together and to join the community of one another. He missed that. He was grieving. He was grieving the loss of this Lord and Savior that he thought was, was this huge miracle worker. 
But he chose to grieve by himself. Friends, there's a lot of us that like to grieve by ourselves. I'm one of them. That's not what we're called to do. We're called to carry one another's burdens. That's right. See, Thomas missed out. What did he miss out on? See, if we back up just a few verses. In verse 19, he, he missed out on the presence, the power, and the peace of the Lord. On that evening, on the first day of the week, when the disciples were gathered with the doors locked for the fears of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came among them and said, Peace be with you. <laughs> See, he missed on the presence of Jesus showing up. Friends, I don't want to miss when God shows up. Do you? I talked with someone earlier today. Rarely do I answer phone calls on a Sunday because Sundays tend to be a little busy. And I, I talk, ch chatted with this, this fellow disciple of Christ. And I, I warned against leaving early or, or, or not coming to church. Not because you, you don't need church to go to heaven, people. I don't want you to mis misinterpret that. But as Mama from Mama's family once said, you don't need church to go to heaven, but you don't need a, a parachute to jump out of an airplane. It kind of helps, though. When we miss the communion of other believers, we miss on the presence of Jesus Christ. See, I don't know, even if I can't feel Jesus, but I see him moving amongst people, that sends me through shock waves. I love to see when people return back into God's house because God, they're getting something from the Lord here. I asked a question, and I'm so glad that y'all didn't respond. If y'all were here just to hear my voice, I'm glad that you're not. I don't want you to come to hear my voice. I want you to come to hear his. Amen. And see, Thomas missed out on that. He missed out on the presence and the power that embodies Christ. He missed out on the peace because the first thing that Christ gave was peace be to you. Anybody else going through chaos in their lives? See, Christ is the only one to give us peace in, the, in that moment. That's right. That's right. We can miss out on that when we miss out on the communion of saints. Your simple fact that you're here today encourages me. I get to look into eyes of people. And it encourages me. Five years ago, we didn't have this healthy of a crowd, did we, Doc? <laughs> My son, first thing that he noticed was, Dad, that old guy's over in the corner calling people to come to church. <laughs> he said, we need more people because you're here. <laughs> well, it, it, the Lord gives us what the Lord gives us. See, you guys are an encouragement to me, but at the same time, I hope and pray that you're an encouragement to one another. See, when we show up together, we get to experience the presence and the power and the peace that Christ gives us. I remember growing up in church and it's the only thing that I was not a well-liked person when I was a kid, more of a loner actually. I didn't buy into the gangs. I wasn't a, I wasn't a drug addict but yet. So I was a loner. Church was my only safe place. I know that's a key word and a trigger word nowadays, but church was a place I could come into his sanctuary and my life out there didn't matter, at least for a moment. I don't know what I'd do without the church. I wouldn't know what I would do without the assembly of fellow believers. Somebody call the cops on me because they think they're going to go too long. What else did he miss out? He missed out on the praise of the Lord. Can you imagine that moment when Jesus first shows up? <laughs> they worshiped and they prayed. See, in verse 20, it tells us, after he had said this, he showed him his hands and his eyes. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. He missed out praising God with his brothers and sisters for the last three and a half years. He missed out the worship. There are times when I give a message and I, I'm, I'm overcritical of myself. I usually am. I'm wondering, man, you did this wrong. You did this wrong. You did this wrong. There's always someone who says, man, pastor, I love that message. This is what it said to me. I'm like, all right, you're still working. I'm so glad of it. 
when that person walks out and they're worshiping and praising God, it affects me. Because I just know, I just realize, hey, God can use an idiot still to affect people's lives. It's God that's affecting your life. And when I get to see people praise him, when someone says, Pastor, i got to testify. And y'all know how I'm not a big fan of testimonies in the middle of the service. But man, when I was gone for that one week and the, the, the person we had scheduled to be here didn't show up and I heard that there was testimony after testimony after testimony and we pretty much had the same length of a service and what we would have had if you were here. That gives me word, reason to praise. To know that God is still working in people's lives. Thomas missed out on praise. This authentic praise. See, he also missed out on promotion and provision. See, Christ came in and gave the disciples a job. Then he told them, I'm going to give you the tools to do it. Thomas didn't get that. Oh, but I can get the provision and and I can get the, the orders from the Lord by looking in the word. A lot of folks that have, been, that, that have been out of church for quite some time will ask, how's your relationship with the Lord going? Oh, I pray all the time. Fantastic. It makes me happy to hear that. When's the last time you opened up that Bible I gave you when I baptized you? And I always hear it quiet. Friends, you want to know what his provision is, you've got to look in his word. That's right. That's right. You want to know how he's enabled you and equipped you to do that job you got to look in the Word. Don't rely. And if you, you come to Bible study on Sunday night, you're going to hear from Doc. We have another Bible study on Wednesday night that we stream. We have a prayer meeting that meets every Tuesday night, and we pray over people's names. We're going to have to start adding some people's names, actually, by the way. I'm overjoyed to see Joe back there with his bride. and encourages me. So much so, Joe is going to be prayed for first on Tuesday. I don't know what Joe's gone through. I really hope it's Joe and not John, because Joe and John came in here, right? It's Joe? Okay, all right. I got a thumbs up. We, we hear provision from the Lord. We hear his call when we get together. It was an older pastor that I could not forsake the call of God in my life when he got up and said, don't give me the fact that you're too old for this. I followed God at 58 years old. This gentleman's now 78. He's still my mentor. He lives down in Georgia. All because he gave a sermon. And I said, well, there was my last excuse. See, we, he missed out on Jesus Christ's actual words of instruction. He missed out on how we are to do what we are to do. Jesus says, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. If you forgive someone's sins, then their sins will be forgiven. I'm going to equip you to do the work of the Lord. You're going to have the tools. Thomas missed out on this. And yet when they said, Thomas, you, you, you missed our, you, you, we saw Jesus. I ain't buying it. Not unless I can touch some holes. How can you overwhelmingly not hear what these people had to say? I can't imagine how excited they were. But see, then Thomas had to get to a decision. Thomas was there when Jesus showed up. And I can see Jesus just really talking to Thomas in a way that Thomas, he has that personal relationship. I, I, I love my brother Matthew, and I can have conversations with Matthew in a certain tone that I can't have with most of any other people. Why? Because I have a relationship with Matthew. But I can see Jesus looking at Thomas going, excuse me, here you go. How about it? Here's my side. What are you going to do now? Thomas immediately made a decision. See, Thomas hadn't made that decision before. He'd gone through the motions. He'd shown up. 
he followed Jesus. He had the same pastor that Luke had, and he had the same pastor that Matthew had, same pastor that Peter had, same pastor that Judas had. But when it come down to brass tack, he said, no, I'm checking out. But yet, our Lord and Savior, it has grace. Aren't you glad you serve a God of second chances? Yes. 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 Second chances on top of second chances on top of second chances. Over and over and over we have second chances. But sooner or later those chances will run out. And Thomas said, my Lord and my God. See, critics of the Bible will tell you that Jesus never claimed to be God. And, you know, I have, a, I have a couple of different biblical arguments for that. You know, he fought off the Pharisees twice. They wanted to, they wanted to do bodily harm, and death was, was that harm when he said, I am. But he also did not rebuke Thomas for the praise of saying, my God. First thing that Thomas said was, my Lord. It's the person I yield all of my life to. It's the person I will follow and do and follow those instructions. See, that's who Jesus was to Thomas before his death. He was his Lord. He lorded over his life. Thomas left his family. He left his job. He left his familiar life to follow Jesus. But in the moment of absence or what he thought was absence, he went right back to world, world of living. Do we do that, friends? Monday morning, it comes back, and we're back, right back to the life that we used to live. Because we don't have Jesus and hymns that we like singing and musicians to lead us and pastors to teach or Sunday school teachers to teach. We're back in the world where we think that Jesus doesn't exist. See, if Thomas said, you are my Lord, I've given you my whole life, and I'm giving it back to you. Then he said, my God, he's the one I believe in. Friends, Jesus is God. Jesus didn't tell him any differently. He didn't, he didn't say, hold on now, don't be going praising me. I've said a few times to a few of you folks that, man, I'm really, your sermons are really... Don't you dare put me on a pedestal. I'm too big to follow. Don't praise me. Praise the God that speaks through me. He is the source. And when Thomas said, my Lord and my God, he could have just said, my Lord, and stopped there. But he said, and my God. You are the one I worship. I don't sing songs because it happens to be the song that somebody picked out this week. I don't sing songs because I requested it. And who oh, is my favorite song on the radio? I sing God. I sing songs to the Lord my God because he is who I worship. And if he is who I worship on a Sunday morning, he should be worshiped on a Tuesday afternoon at 2 and a Thursday morning at 1030 and a Saturday afternoon or a Saturday night when the bar is open. It's where the tax means a road, friends. Yeah. What's your decision? See, Thomas was a skeptic because he wasn't Lord and God. Thomas missed out on everything he missed out on because Jesus was not Lord and God. Is he your Lord and God? You don't have to tell me. We are going to have some kind of time of prayer, so I'm going to have a, a musician come up. Normally, we don't do this on a communion Sunday because we like things. I like things orderly. I'm a guy that likes a plan, but I can't rightfully walk out those doors today and say, "Lord, I gave it my all." What? Did, no, you didn't. You missed an opportunity. 
I'm going to ask the person on the camera to go to the static screen. Give me a thumbs up when that happens. He's done. See what Jesus said in the very beginning is blessed are you, 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 you get it because you see me. But even more blessed are the people who believe this and yet haven't seen me yet. Friends, I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond. Is he your Lord and your God? Even though you haven't seen it, are you willing to say, yes, he's my Lord and my God? Tradition says that he went to India and he died a martyr. He was buried in Mylapore, which is modern day Chennai, India. He made that decision in front of his brothers and sisters, in front of Jesus Christ. You are my Lord and my God. And he didn't stop there. His Sunday morning service didn't end. He went to work for the Lord. He, he went to his death saying he is still my Lord and my God. I don't know if it's going to be easier or harder for us to worship in the future. I have no idea. I can tell you that there's a book that I've read that tells me it's going to get harder before it gets better. Are you willing to say he is my Lord and my God? Is this the first time that you said it, or is it the 50th time? I don't care if you got to say it 70 times, seven times. Is he your Lord and your God? We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. If the Lord leads you to front, don't you dare put him off. One of the things I've learned through being a pastor is tomorrow is never guaranteed. Amen. That's right. too many people, friends. Some that were a great person. There's just a good person. When I ask them what the relationship with Jesus is, oh, they were a really good person. And then there was folks that we laid to rest and absolutely they had a walk with Christ. It was hard. It was messy, but they had a walk. I laid my own mom to rest this week, this year. We are not guaranteed tomorrow. Father, we come to you in submission. Lord, I personally reclaim you as my Lord and my God. Lord, I ask that you speak to the person today that is wrestling with that decision. Maybe they've made you their Lord, but they haven't made you their God that they worship. When it comes down to the very end of things that life is too harsh or too scary or too detrimental. Maybe they're just too caught up in mourning, too caught up in the loss of relationships or finances or health. Lord, I ask that you reach out to that person right now in the pew and ask, are you willing to make next statement, my Lord and my God. Transform us today, Father. Transform us today, Lord. May we leave here as those that worship you, not just as Lord, but as God. The God that supplies. The God that gives everything that we have. The God that is worthy of our worship. It's in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. For those that are online, I want to say thank you for joining us. We will be observing communion today. And for those that are in house, we will be enjoying communion together as a body. Online, have a great day. Have a great rest of the week.